Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, welcome back to Celebrating Act 2 with our brain whisperer, Stephen Campbell, and my partner, John Coleman. How are you guys? Good, we're good. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, are we boring you, John? Are you yawning? No. Uh, now that was just a yawn. That was a yawn. Could have indicated boredom, however. Yeah. It, it's a very common sign of boredom. Yeah. Why is that? Well, boredom is actually a modern luxury. Prior to the 18th century, there wasn't time for boredom. This is before the Industrial Revolution, because everyone is spending their time finding food and getting shelter and being secure. So you didn't have time to be bored. But when the Industrial Revolution came along and everyone was able to do 10 times more than they were able to do, suddenly they had all this time in their hands and they weren't quite sure to do with it. So then boredom came along. So let's let's talk about just what boredom is. Um, the most common way to define boredom is having nothing to do. I, up to about 10 years ago, was very busy because I was not only a professor during the day, I was also the evening dean at night. So I was working from eight in the morning till 10 at night. Then in 2008, my wife sat me down and she said, okay, let's look at this. You're 61 years old and you're working 12 hours a day. Your dad died at 62. And if you die early, I will kill you. <laughs> okay. So we need to talk about your pulling back. So I did. Actually, I retired back in 2008 and I had all this time on my hands some of the time was taken up by boredom boredom is really a universal experience almost everyone suffers from it so if you're bored that doesn't mean you're mad or well it could be but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're mad or angry it's just that you have a lot more time than you had before in fact between 30 and 90 percent of americans are bored at some time in their lives. And that not only involves older people, it also involves younger people. So it's not just something that certain people have. Everyone at certain times in their life are absolutely bored. Um, in fact, there's a very positive link between boredom and educational attainment. Usually people who are not as educated as others become bored more quickly because they don't see the options that could be out there. You know, it's kind of interesting. Um, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, letting us know that uh, boredom is an invention of recent history as opposed yeah. to uh, a past history. That, that, I never thought of it in those terms, but uh, you, you think of people in boredom who are sitting around the house and not doing anything. But I know in my work career uh, that I've seen in fellow employees who were just bored with what they were doing. They didn't see mm -hmm. any purpose in it. Mm -hmm. And so they were bored on the job. They, yeah. didn't, they didn't have to get off work to be bored. Yeah. Is that yeah. something that uh, uh, you've uh, found to be true? Or well, is that just an that, observation that, that I've just had? indicates that there's a lot of causes for boredom. Boredom doesn't come from just one thing. It doesn't come from your job or there's all sorts of causes. So let's look at some of the causes of actual boredom. The first one is what I call monotony in the mind. Monotony in the mind. Boredom is similar to mental fatigue and it's caused by repetition, doing the same thing over and over and over. So this is really interesting. I've been giving the same presentation to audiences all over the world for about 12 years. And I figured it out one time, I've given the same rep the same presentation thousands of times. You would think I would get bored with it. I really don't because the, re the message that I give is so exciting. It can help people change how they see themselves that whenever I give it, I get thrilled over being given the opportunity to do so. So it's not monotonous 
to me, even though I'm doing the same thing. But boredom can be uh, caused by simple repetition. You're doing the same thing over and over, and that can lead to lack of interest. So uh, such tasks that require continuous attention, waiting on the airport, prisoners locked in cells, that can really cause a lot of boredom. So that's what I call monotony in the mind. There's another reason that I call lack of flow. All of us have kind of a flow. If there's ever, if I've ever seen flow, it's between you and John. Um, all of us have kind of a flow. It's, it's, it occurs when a person's skill matches the level of challenge that are in their lives. So I have kind of a flow in that um, I have all this opportunity to share with people. I'm glad I'm not doing the same thing I did 20 years ago when I was teaching six different, six different classes during the day. So that flow changes. But sometimes the flow is such that you're not able to do things that would keep it going. And that's where boredom can come in. Also, there's what I call a need for novelty, a need for new things. So Mary and I, who have been married for a long time, since COVID, have been seeing even a lot more of each other than we were before because we've been at home. And both she and I have been thinking of ways that can keep us from being bored. So what we're doing now is we're going through our garage and we are reviewing all the stuff that we've developed over 50 years of marriage. And we're throwing a lot of things out. So that's novel. That's looking at all the stuff that we had and saying, okay, that's valuable and that isn't. So sometimes there's just a lack of novelty, okay? There's also what I call paying attention. Boredom is linked to problems who have attention disorder. They have problems paying attention to a person that's talking to them. Our attention span has really shortened since multimedia has come to the fore, to where usually way back 40, 50 years ago, before Facebook and Twitter and the internet, our attention span was much longer because we would have to sit in a class for an hour, hour and a half and listen to a person. And we were able to do that. Now our children have a real problem with that because their teachings and their lessons come in little spurts. And after the spurt is over, it's gone and then they get bored. I find myself actually the same way. I can see something in two minutes on YouTube that it would usually take me to go down to the library, which is two miles away, go through the books, find the information, write down the information, put the book back. Now with Google, it takes me about 30 seconds to find millions of articles on the same subject. So that can cause my attention span to really shorten. And I find myself getting bored when a person is really speaking for a long time and he's not going anywhere. Then you have what I call a lack of autonomy. People feel bored because quite frankly, they feel trapped. And feeling trapped is a big part of boredom. You feel stuck. This has really been the case since the pandemic. People are stuck at homes with each other. And so what Mary and I have had to do is we've had to come up with ways to keep our relationship alive and going. So we go for a lot of walks where you don't have to wear masks if you're outside. We've learned to play new games like Uno with our grandchildren. We see our grandchildren who live in Ireland over our um, portal, which is wonderful. So we've had to creatively think of new ways to fill up the parts in our minds that are just plain bored. So let's review what we've learned. Boredom is relatively new in the history of man. 
because prior to the Industrial Revolution, man spent his time finding food and shelter. He doesn't have to do that anymore. And now with Google, you can find information in almost anything within seconds. It's absolutely amazing. So people that are bored are not unique. Everyone in America has been bored. What do you do with it? Well, you look at you say, you look at what you're doing and you say, okay, how can I fill this up? How can I do something different? Let's end with this. It all begins with how you think. It all begins up here. Now, your brain hates change. The brain's job is to keep you safe. The brain's job is to keep you risk-free. That's why it says, stay inside, don't do anything, let's just stay safe, which is not going to be very <coughs> conducive to getting rid of the boredom. What we do is we take advantage of the other part of the brain. And that is the part of the brain that loves to create new things. So your brain hates change, but it loves to create. So if there is anything that I'm doing right now, it's creating. As you can see behind me, there's a model of the Nautilus that I spent a month creating, and I loved it. I'm creating another model of the Nautilus that is being held up by a giant squid. Why do I do that? Because I'm beginning to get bored staying here, and I find myself wanting to do other things. So I'm finding myself doing more writing. Mary and I are taking more walks. We're spending a lot of time in the garage throwing things out. So boredom is something that we all face, but we don't have to say, well, this is the way it is. It doesn't have to be that way. Here's the wonderful thing about the brain. The brain hates change, but it loves to create new things. If you're bored, what can you create that's new? So I'm picking up my guitar again. I'm writing more and more. Mary and I are spending more time walking. And what's so wonderful is the brain says, okay, this is really fun. Let's do it some more. The name of my book is Making Your Mind Magnificent. It was going to be Making Your Mind Your Mentor, but my publisher said nobody knows what a mentor. I like my old title better. A mentor is someone who sees more in you than you see in yourself. That's what your brain can become. And that is especially needed as right now we go through the pandemic. Wow. This is, this is really great. You know, it's kind of interesting. Um, uh, I'm glad that you didn't, because you're an upbeat guy, uh, but it, there's nothing in what you said that says boredom is good. No. So, so, well, so, boredom, I, actually, there are studies. Boredom can make you be creative. If hmm. I'm bored, what can I do? So I, I never thought I would spend so much time that I did creating that wonderful model of the Nautilus hmm. or making a giant squid. So boredom can say, okay, what can I do to get rid of this boredom? It can make you more active. It can make you more creative. Well, I was so, thinking. I was thinking throughout your entire presentation, which I loved, uh, is that uh, going back to we must have had about twenty or thirty episodes so far, all fascinating uh, that we've done with you. And the yeah. one thing that kept coming back to me was your brain believes whatever you tell it. Exactly. Okay. Yes. So exactly. That, so to me, it was just tell your brain to do something else, get That's involved right. with something else, and That's you right. could be the control of your own fate. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the most exciting discoveries of psychology, and it really began with William James back in the early, uh, the late 1890s, is that our brain can be, what's the word for it? We can control what we say about ourselves. We can control what we say about our environment. So our feelings are not coming from the pandemic. They're coming from what we are saying about the pandemic 
to ourselves. It all comes from what we're thinking up here and we can replace what we're thinking if it's negative. And that's yeah. so exciting. John, yeah. I have the advantage that since I'm in the control room here. I get to see all of these images all the time. And uh, even though that you started us out with some faux boredom, I noticed that you were paying attention like I was during the entire presentation with rapt attention. So yes. did we cure yeah. your boredom, your faux boredom yeah. at least? I think you might have. You yeah. might have. Yeah, yeah. I probably look like this to, off camera. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, you did. No, you look hey, like this. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Steve, earlier you mentioned um, children and uh, f fascinating uh, thing happened in our family years ago when my youngest daughter was, I don't know, nine or ten. She's now an adult with children. And um, she was sitting around one day and she said, Mom, I'm bored. I mean, literally said, Mom, yeah. I'm bored. Yeah. I have nothing to do. I'm bored. What can I do? I mean, that was literally the plaintive cry from that little yes. girl. Yes. Yes. And both Penny and I turned to her almost simultaneously and said, "You're in charge of figuring out what to do." That's right. You can think of something that you right. would like to do. That's right. We're not in charge. No. Of finding things for you to do. That's right. Other the turning point in making your bed. The turning point in our marriage, which happened after being married for 10 years, is when we went to therapy and Mary said to the therapist, it's Steve's job to make me happy. Oh. When I heard that, something just clicked and I got very angry and we drove home in separate cars. And then I had to go for a walk. And then we went back to therapy. And Mary had to learn, no, it's not. It's her job. I'm there for her. I can support her. But I can't make her happy. I can't fill in those parts. That's something that she has to do. Now, I can be there and love her and support her and listen to her. But it's her that has to make herself happy. Yeah. And that so changed our marriage. It really did. It was hard. It took about three years for us to get to this new way of thinking. But wow. we're, we still love each other so very much. Yeah. And so in that regard and also regarding boredom, it's really a matter of personal responsibility. It really yeah. is. It really is. It all starts up here. Yeah. And so of, course, you, of course, you have to know that you're, it's your responsibility. Yeah. I, unlike my nine-year-old daughter who said, you know, essentially saying it's not my responsibility. Yeah. It's your job to find something yeah. to break my boredom. Yeah. And that's something she had to learn, which she obviously did. Yeah, yeah. quite so. You, this yeah. girl never stops. Yeah, she never stops. Well, I have to, I have to say that this, this uh, episode has been anything but boring. <laughs> and nice. I, encourage, you. I encourage everybody to uh, visit our YouTube website. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And then you can binge watch everything that we've been doing with Stephen Campbell. And you will, I promise, you can go episode after episode after episode and never be bored. And <laughs> uh, this is a perfect example of it. So thank you, uh, Stephen, for again, illuminating another topic that we don't often think about, but uh, for some people it could be a real problem. But the important right. thing is that we can do something to take care of it ourselves. We don't have to depend on somebody else. Thank As you. always, thank you. Got it. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.